it has been well and truly overshadowed despite claiming the big scalp of the Sydney Roosters uh, with the fallout since. All about uh, some of the big hits on the nights, and we know, of course, the head eye contact, Cracktown Gus, uh, Victor Radley in particular. Uh, two sim biddings, could have perhaps been three on report <coughs> four times. He's now going to be spending some time on the sideline on the back of that as well. Through your eyes, what did you see in regards to Victor Radley on Saturday? You don't know what I, you don't want to know what I saw. You don't <laughs> you don't want to know what I think because I just I, found I, it ridiculous. I want to know, Gus. I want no. to know where you're at with this because I, I, Andrew Johns walked out of that game on the weekend, mm. which is which is a Big statement from the game's best ever, and I, I want to know where you stand. You, you our know, game has you know, done. Our game has done this to itself several times. I don't think Radley had a case to answer on any of these impacts. I think he was strong. I think he was doing every time. He never hit with one arm in the head with any player. The third one where he hit Xavier Coates and, and just hit him, they pulled it up because it was too tough and then made up the fact that he might have brushed his head when he was on the ground to justify pulling the game up. I found the whole thing way over the top, way over the top. Our game has done this to itself from periods of time and we've just got to get through it and the players and coaches are going to have to sort it out as people off the field interfere with what's going on on the field. People who don't understand the game or understand what people want to see. What do you want me to say? Because you know, well, the, thing, the thing is, they're not going to go back. They're not going to... And you can't, you've never been able to hit people in the head, OK? Yeah. You've never been, We know that. But it's this incidental contact and these accidents and these, and these Victor Radley guys going in the tackle 100 miles an hour and brushing a bloke in the chin that is frustrating people and frustrating fans. This is the frustrating thing. So how do we stop it? How, how, how do, like, Peter Valenti can't now come out and they say... They are incapable of stopping it now because it's, it's now gone beyond that. It's gone beyond self-preservation and, and self-image now because it's, it's... Now that they've started this, there's no backtracking until we get to next season and forget about it. That's, that's what happens. I've been through this plenty of times in the game of rugby league, all right? Mm. And they can cite a number of reasons for what's going on, but if that's not the way we're going to play, if we're going to stop forceful contact from the defender, all right, and no forceful contact from the man running the ball, and I'll show you an example about it later... What's going to happen is the, the defences are going to have to become so submissive. It's yeah. going to have to be grabbed. I watched a game on Thursday night between the Cowboys and the Knights, which was like one of those old-fashioned training sessions. You know, he used to say, yeah. you know, we'll play against each other, but don't, you know, we've got to save... Scrimmage session. We've got to save you're it for the weekend. You're going out but you're not banging. You're not, you're not yeah. trying to hurt each other. We've got to save the yeah. effort for the weekend. Yeah. That's what the game looked like. And if that's what the game's going to become, I'm sorry. Well, no that's, one's that, going to that, watch that's it. That's my question. I, I want to know what they want the game to look like. They don't know what the game's that, going to look like. That's what I agree with you. I don't think they actually know. They do you cannot. This is what fans love the game. They love Victor Radley type players, Josh Maguire type players. You fly by the edge of their seat. You want to come out line and hurt someone. Something every now and is going to go wrong every now. Well, you and look then. at this sequence. You look at this sequence. Here's 115 kilo Tavita Pangai Jr. picking on a 75 kilo halfback. He's having his first game of the season. All right. So every time he gets the ball, he's narrowing at this kid. He's knocked him over with elbows. He's knocked him over with knees. He's pushed him out of the way. He's cartwheeled him backwards three times. He's run over the top of him to set up a try. And the kid keeps getting up, and the kid keeps coming. Not once did the kid lay down. He kept presenting himself because that's my job. I'm an NRL footballer. Not complaining or doing anything. Look at this one. Bang! Knocks him over. Kid bounces up, chases the ball again, and does what he does. Now Victor Radley says, "Right, are you? Get this India." Crowd loves it. Everyone loves it. He's not hurt. He doesn't go to the HIA. They play on for three more tackles. Bunker, get the microscope out. Oh, we've got one. Look at this. We've got one. Radley, you beauty, get him off. <laughs> Gus, I'm start. finding. I'm Don't finding. Don't start I'm... me. Don't start me. That, that is just disgraceful. Now, when you go back to the when you go back to the Tavita Pangai one, and look at it head on, I want to show you something about Tavita Pangai. All right, as Radley comes in to tackle him, Tavita Pangai will have the ball in the right hand, which Radley is going to tackle. He'll switch it over to the left hand. Now we're going to go through the whole lot, do we? I want to get to the last one that Radley's actually charged for. All right, so here he is again. He's knocking the little black over all night. And the Roosters are, right, so he changes the ball from the right hand to the left hand and virtually in shoulder charge action, shoulder charge action, tries to defend himself on Radley. If he didn't have the ball, he'd be charged with a shoulder charge. So where's it going to end? Where's it going to win no, when so blacks I'm, are... I'm actually with you on this side. I mean, I mean, you a lot of time argue about this and they argue about the obstructions and that. That's something if someone you're... defended like well, Tavita Pangai just presented there, he'd be getting four weeks for a shoulder charge. No, so if he was defending... Yeah, Radley's exactly. the one down defending himself down there? Give yeah, me I'm, a break. I'm, I'm with you. He never got up. He wasn't hurt. He went to the HIA. Why did they even choose to look at the tackle? He's been running over the little black all night. That's bad for the game. That's what fans want to see. That's what the football game's all about. Apparently not anymore. We've got to get a new game. I'm not disagreeing with you, Gus. I, I, I found it really hard to watch what Victor Radley went through. I haven't seen a player in that sort of state on the field since maybe Mark Guyer when he used to 
get really you know, disorientated and do some crazy things. I can't I, see one offence in what he's done. I, not one. I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I spoke to Peter Volandis today to... Uh, I asked him, first of all, about what Radley's supposed to do. He said, not hit the head. He said, he's got to, he's got to lower the target zone. He's got to lower the zone. Uh, difficult to do at high speed, like you say. Uh, it's difficult to do at high... Not only at high speed, but it's difficult... The game is unpredictable. He, he doesn't the halfback know, around the waist. He doesn't know what Pangolo yeah, Jr. is going to do. He, it's the game is too unpredictable. Now, you don't... I'm not condoning hits in the no, head. No, I know. That's I not what we But yeah. this unpredictability is what people love about the game. We can't take that out. We can't go back to a Thursday night game where so, we're just making it hit all right, up. So, all right. So let's say Radley lowers his tackle range, mm. all right? He lowers his tackle range with Pangai Jr. with his arm there like that and now his arm there like that. Where do you want him to lower it to? Waste. To yeah, hit himself yeah. in the head like yeah. the St George boy did, tackling mm. from the kickoff did the other night? Cherubin's knocked himself out? Mm. Cherubin's tackle on Papa Leahy was a beautiful copy textbook tackle. What did Papa Leahy do? Flick pass, try. Try. Yeah. Which is exactly what Pangai Jr. would have done. You can't... Lower, you can't tuck it. You don't get any reward for tucking around the legs these days. Blokes are too skillful, too big, too strong. They've got the ability to I said to Peter Volandis, he didn't make the cut last night in the last week in the interview. I said, how would you tackle Jason Tolmalolo? How would you tackle Kikau? And he said, I'd tackle him around the legs. I said, you wouldn't last two minutes. Mm. I said, we'd be wheeling you off in two minutes. They don't understand the game, right? Look. The people that are making these decisions don't understand the game. And we can't expect the bunker and the video and the referees to understand it either. They don't, you know, it's not their job, but they're just under instruction to do this. Why this escalated the way it did mid-season, I have no idea. Why we suddenly, two weeks well, ago, decided... Well, the reason, Gus, the reason I was given today was yeah. because I spoke to Peter Volandis today and he said it's to do with potential governments becoming involved and restricting what rugby league will be able to do in the future. Maybe even saying mm. you can't play the game. Now, that's... That's his well, reason. That's where we're going. Let's not play. Let's call it off. Let's all go home. Take out all this off and we'll go home. We'll forget about the game. You're not but allowed to play sport I'm, anymore because you might get hurt. I'll explain to you right, what so he said. One minute it's litigation. The next minute it's player welfare. The next minute it's because mum won't let little mm. Joey play in participation. Now it's about the government apparently doing it. What is the reason? All right, I've heard five reasons in the space of a week to, des to describe the debacle that we're putting our game through at the moment which is not the rugby league that people fell in well, love with. I find I'm watching... When I'm watching the game now, I'm watching for head highs. I'm watching... That's uh, all we're waiting I'm for. I'm watching the for one. the referee. It's like, it's like three years ago when we had the referee crackdown, the Greenberg started. It just destroyed the game for three months. We had to ride it out. We had to wait until, you know... They... So, you know, what will happen is it will eventually die over. Eventually. If not, we won't have a game. I don't think it's going to die over. I think Peter Volandis... The players is... and coaches will accommodate. But it's not going to stop the HIAs. Mm. It's not going to stop the concussions. Mm. All right? It's not because lowering the tackle rate is only going to produce other things. Mm. I, I feel sorry for the players and the coaches with the way that we constantly change the rules mid-season or pre-season. Yeah, I think that's the issue mid-season. If, you, if you're changing the off-season, you give them a whole off-season to get used to it and try something different, maybe they could accommodate Paul, it. But we went can't... through this. I, I'm sick of people. I'm sick of people espousing opinions now without doing any research, A, on concussion and B, on tackle techniques. No, we'll just tackle low. All right, well, I'll take you back to the time where... I, I, so you go out and tackle everyone low and see what happens, see what sort of game you've got, see how many people get hurt. You know, they just don't understand. They haven't been through the process before. So just saying tackle lower is the most inane solution that I have ever heard. You know what I did the other night after the Roosters-Broncos debacle? I actually went on YouTube and I looked up the biggest hits and the greatest charges in State of Origin history. And I counted them. I reckon there's about 487 players that would have been put on suspension oh, if they referee the game the same way. So our most revered and valuable product will become an absolute disaster if... We referee it the same way we shouldn't have started him. We shouldn't have got him started. Well, I'm just saying, I'm going back in here. And all the promotions for this origin coming up, they're going to have to find some footage where someone is not being hit too hard. Because if it becomes a game of Oztag, the origin, there goes your greatest money making product. But you decide, you know what you're doing.